Hey, welcome to the Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to use for loops in C. Now, a for loop is a special type of loop that we can use in C, which allows us to use something called an indexing variable. And this indexing variable will basically tell us what iteration of the loop we're currently on. And we can use that indexing variable to do a bunch of stuff like we could uh, loop through an array of items. Um, we could do all sorts of stuff inside of a loop. So down here in my program, you'll see that I have a while loop set up. And I have just sort of a basic while loop. And I wanna show you guys what it's doing. So essentially up here I'm saying int i is equal to one. So I'm giving this integer i the value of one. And I'm saying while i is less than or equal to five, I'm gonna print out the value of i, and then I'm gonna increment i. So this is a very simple while loop. Basically we have this variable i, and every time we go through the loop, we're printing it out until it's greater than five. So let's run this program and we'll see what it does. So you'll see over here, we're basically printing out values between one and five. And I wanna point out what's actually happening. So the first time that we go through this while loop, we're printing out one. The second time we're printing out two. The third time we're printing out three. In other words, this variable i is basically telling us what iteration of the loop we're currently on. So on the first iteration of the loop, i is telling us that we're on the first iteration of the loop, right? The first time we go through the loop, i is equal to one. Second time we go through the loop, i is equal to two. Third time, i is equal to three. So this variable i over here is basically telling us how many times we've gone through the loop. So on the third time, it's telling us three, fourth time, four, et cetera. And believe it or not, this is actually a very useful thing for us to have when we're looping. And so there's a lot of situations where you're gonna wanna know what iteration of the loop you're currently on when you're looping. So with a normal while loop, like I can basically just specify a condition up here and I can do whatever I want, right? It's, it's very open, you can kind of just do whatever you want with it, but, in a lot of situations, and there's tons of these situations, we're gonna wanna have a variable just like i that will tell us what iteration of the loop that we're currently on, or you know, basically just a variable that's gonna keep changing every time we go through the loop. And this is such a common situation in C that there's actually something called a for loop. And a for loop allows us to take all of this code and condense it into its own single loop. So it's taking this situation where we wanna have a variable like i, and it's basically allowing us to do it a lot easier and a lot cleaner. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can create a for loop. I'm gonna come down here below this while loop, and I'm gonna create a basic for loop structure. So I'm just gonna say for, I'm gonna make an open and closed parentheses and an open and closed curly bracket. Now, the difference between a for loop and a while loop is basically gonna happen inside of these parentheses. So in the parentheses of a while loop, we have our loop condition or our loop guard, right? This is specifying whether or not we can keep looping through. Inside this for loop, we're gonna have three different things. So instead of just one loop guard, we're actually gonna have three different things that we wanna put inside of here. So with a for loop, the first thing I'm gonna put in here is this variable i. So you'll notice in the while loop, we have our variable i up here, and this is basically allowing us to loop through and keep track of how many times we've gone through the loop. So what I can do down here is I can do something similar. I could say like int i, and I'm not gonna give this a value. Inside of here, I'm gonna say i is equal to one. So basically, I'm gonna take my variable i, and I'm gonna give it an initial value of one. And now I have my i variable. I have my variable that's gonna change every time we go through the loop. The next thing I wanna do is include my looping condition. So up here we have i is less than or equal to five. That's our condition. I can put the same thing down here. So I'm gonna say i is less than or equal to five. The third thing I wanna do is increment i. So you'll notice down here, every time we go through this loop, we're incrementing that variable i. I'm gonna do the same thing over here in this little third quadrant. So you'll notice I have these little like sections. Here's the first section. We're initializing the variable i. We're saying i is equal to one. Here we're specifying our looping conditions. So I'm saying we're gonna keep looping while i is less than or equal to five. And over here is a little line of code that's gonna get executed every time we go through the loop. So here I'm saying i plus plus. I could also say like i minus minus, and that would decrement i. I could say like i is equal to i plus two, et cetera. Like I could do basically anything I wanted over here. 
Let's just keep it at I++ for now. So you'll see, I was basically able to take all of this code and condense it into its own little type of loop. And now instead of having to like print this out and create this variable up here, I can do all of that inside of this for loop. Now I could basically take this line of code, I could paste it down into here, and we essentially have the same thing. So right now, this block of code and this block of code are 100% equivalent. They're doing exactly the same thing. So let's go ahead and get rid of all this code and let's test out our shiny new for loop. So I'm just gonna run my program and you'll see over here, we're getting exactly the same thing that we got before. We're printing out one, two, three, four, five. So it's the same exact program doing the same exact thing. And that's why for loops are great because we can take that little structure like where we have an indexing variable and we can use it with something like this. So I wanna show you another situation where these for loops can come in handy and we can use them to loop through all of the elements inside of an array. So actually up here, I have this array that I created. It's called lucky numbers and I'm just gonna grab this and bring it down here. So we have this lucky numbers array. It has four, eight, 15, 16, 23, 42. And what I could actually do is I could loop through all of the elements inside of this array from this for loop. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can do that. Now let's first off see how many elements we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six elements in this array. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna say i is equal to zero. And you'll see why we need to do this in a second, but basically array indexes start at zero. So this first element in the array is at index position zero. And just for a little refresher, if I wanted to access one of these elements from inside the array, I could say like lucky numbers was zero, and this is going to give me access to this element. If I said lucky numbers two, then I'll get access to this element, this 15. So this is basically how we can access an element inside the array. So I'm gonna set i equal to zero, and I'm gonna say I wanna loop while i is less than six. And six was how, how many elements we had in the array. So I wanna keep looping as long as we're less than six. And I'm gonna say I plus plus. Now down here, I'm gonna do this same exact thing, but instead of printing out I, I'm gonna print out lucky numbers I. So I'm gonna print out the array element at index position I in lucky numbers. Basically the first time we go through this loop, we're gonna be printing out lucky numbers zero because i is gonna be equal to zero. The second time we go through the loop, we're gonna be printing out lucky numbers one because i is gonna be equal to one, etc. And we're gonna keep doing that until we get all the way up to five, which is gonna be the last element, which is this 42. So let's go ahead and do that. So I need to put this back to i and let's run this program. So you'll see over here, we're basically doing exactly what I said. So the first time through the loop, we're printing out four, we're printing out that first element the second time through the loop, we're printing out eight, which is the second element, 15, 16, 23, and 42. So we're printing out all of those elements in turn as we go through this for loop. And there's a lot of situations where for loops are gonna, gonna come in handy, but this is a very, 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 very common situation where we want to loop through all the elements in an array and either print them out or you know do something to them, whatever. So that's the basics of working with for loops. And I do just wanna say like anything that you do with a for loop, you could do with a while loop. You know, I basically showed you guys how we transformed that while loop into a for loop. The thing with for loops though, is that they're very convenient. So it makes it really easy to do something like this um, without having to go through all the trouble of creating a while loop. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve. So if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you wanna help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.